Today I'm going to talk to you about eating disorders in children. If you feel like your child has any of the signs or symptoms that I'm going to explain in this video, then this could be a quite of a concern that your child may be going through an eating disorder and you don't know it. Um, a lot of the time it's difficult for parents to, to see these changes uh, so clear cut and associate it with an eating disorder. Most of the time we just think that maybe the child is you know, going through something at school or just growing up, going through puberty, whatever the case may be. Um, most of the time, it's the, 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 the parent is unaware of that issue. Um, or sometimes they think that it might be something else. So I really want to uh, give awareness to this because I see a lot of patients um, who, you know, they bring in their child to a consultation because their child may not be eating uh, too much lately. Um, they might be kind of, you know, just loners or want to eat alone, um, or they just have unusual behavior lately. They become picky eaters. Maybe they've switched to becoming a vegetarian or a vegan. And uh, you know the, the parent is kind of confused and doesn't know if they should pressure their child into eating more or just leave them to take their own decisions when it comes to food. So a lot of the time when these patients come in, um, the last thing on their mind sometimes is an eating disorder. Um, and they're just concerned about the, the, the nutrition of their child and if they're malnutritioned. Um, so, and what happens is that most of the time if you feel like the child is coming in to the consultation with you to see the dietitian um, in, a, in a very uh, resistant way. If they don't actually want to come and see the dietitian, it means that most of the time they already know what the problem is and they don't want anyone to point at it or bring it to attention. Okay, so I'm gonna go with go with I'm gonna go with you into um, uh, behavioral physical and psychological signs that your child may have an eating disorder. If we are going to talk about behavior, sometimes behavior is the easiest thing to see. Physical sometimes could be a bit hidden. You might not realize those changes and we'll, we're gonna get into that. And uh, psychological, you will never know what your child is thinking unless you actually sat down and talked to them about it. And most of the time, parents do. They try to ask their child, they try to get into their heads and it never really works out because that child is, is sometimes ashamed of how they feel, of, of, of having this eating disorder or, being, uh, or not wanting to eat and having this resistance to food. Um, and most of the time, the child will not share it with their parents. Also with the fear, that their parent is gonna judge them or their parent is not gonna understand or they're gonna yell at them. Because most of the time in this scenario, um, the parents are usually already pressuring the child to eat more. So they will kind of build this um, resistance to, the, to telling their parents that they may be dealing with uh, an eating disorder because they know what's going to come after that. They know that it's going to um, be a, a bit of a shame or disappointment also to their parents because their parents are you know, fixated on, you need to eat more, you need to eat more, you don't eat enough, you don't eat enough of this, you don't eat enough of that. You know? So that's also something that um, might cause a parent to not really know what's going on with their child. So if we wanna talk behavior, First, uh, first of all, the, the, the child may suddenly become more interested in exercising. And if you feel like your child starts to become more interested in exercising to a certain extent where it's a bit over the top of what a normal child would want to exercise, especially at their age. So you have to also take the age group into consideration. So if your child, let's say, is at an age where there's only an amount of, of playing or um, you know outdoor activities that they should or would normally be doing, and suddenly they 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 have increased that, um, or you just you just feel like their behavior has become you know very very addicted to to exercising or hobbies that that have to do with a lot of exercising. Those can be signs. Sometimes they're not, but it is in the behavioral if you want. Um, signs of an eating disorder. 
Um, next, you have unusual behavior. So unusual behavior, I know it's very broad, but there's a lot that could come into that. So first, um, if, you're, if, you're, if you notice that your child sometimes doesn't really want to sit on the dinner table with you and eat. So if you feel like your child is either one, um, trying to sit somewhere else, maybe on the TV, maybe in their room, they wanna eat in their room alone. So if it happens once, twice, that's sometimes normal. If it's always something that's happening, this could actually be a sign that they don't want you to witness them having their food. Okay, and they don't want you to witness maybe them not completing their food. Okay, that's one. Second, what can happen is that they feel very, you can sense a very stressed environment uh, while this child is sitting, let's say, on the dinner table, dinner table, or let's say it's dinner time and the child knows that now what's gonna follow is that my mom or my dad are gonna give me my food and they're going to make sure I finish it and they're going to chase me to it. So if you feel like your child is very stressed during that period of time or just seems agitated, just seems like anxiety has risen, um, this could be a sign that this is why they're anxious. This is why um, they feel this, this bit of tension going on. Okay, um, also if your child um, goes to the bathroom a lot after dinner, let's say they do sit on the dinner table with you. If you constantly feel like your child takes a trip to the bathroom after dinner or after lunch, whatever it is that, that whatever meal that they're having, this could also be a sign that they are actually um, getting rid of the food that they just ate. So that's also something that you need to slightly um, watch out for. Um, another, another sign, another behavioral sign is your child um, choosing to wear baggier clothes. So if you feel like your child um, has used to wear a different type of clothing and now suddenly wears baggy jeans, baggy sweatshirts, hoodies, anything that hides the figure of their body, this could be a sign that they are insecure, insecure or self-conscious uh, about their body. And most of the time when that's happening, um, it, you're, you're dealing with, with it, could be, it could be a couple of disorders that they are dealing with. Um, but especially if you feel like your child is already not eating much and already their weight is under and they, they do still choose to wear these clothing, these types of clothing, um, that should be a sign. Um, most of the time, some kids will express in some way um, that they don't want to wear something specific because I don't like how I look in that or I don't like the way my body looks, um, or I rather wear baggier jeans, I don't want anybody to look at me. So these things, these uh, sentences or statements that your child might say could be um, them kind of indirectly saying, um, you know, I don't eat because I don't want to gain weight. Okay, so those are also things that you need to watch out for, especially if we're talking, you know, um, if, if we're talking about preteens or teens that, um, and especially women uh, that want to actually, you know, they start wanting to go out more, they start wanting to be more attractive, they want to look good, they want to put makeup on, they want to wear nice clothing. So if you feel like, you know, you're expecting your, your child or your daughter to be uh, at that place and they're not, they're, they're doing the, quite the opposite and they're wearing very baggy clothing, um, this could very much be a sign of an eating disorder. Um, also, a lot of the time what you see is the child or teenager becomes very, uh, very interested in cooking. They become interested in cooking themselves, one, or they in become interested in cooking, but they don't end up eating the food that they cook. And this, uh, what I believe is psychologically, they, um, they are craving the food. They want some form of interaction with that food, um, but they don't actually want to eat it. Okay, so this is also something that, so if, you're, if your child, you know, uh, wants to be the one that cooks uh, certain meals in the house, especially if it's fatty meals or meals that you know that they used to enjoy, and now, um, you know, they cook the meal, but they don't eat it. This in some way gives them pleasure to cook the food um, and, and deal with the food, like I said, interact with the food, but not actually have the food. Um, so these are things that 
you know, you need to watch out for. Another sign um, of an eating disorder, a behavioral sign, is eating a very large amount of food and seeing no weight gain in your child. So in this case, um, most of the time, it's not what we call anorexia, but probably a case of bulimia nervosa. So usually uh, the child will eat a lot and then throw that back up and not have any of the calories um, from that food. Um, so if you feel like your child has a lot of food, a lot of large meals, and you don't see a weight gain, this is very unusual because your child is growing. Your child needs those calories. It's not like, it's not like observing an adult. Um, so that child usually is, will, will gain weight, will grow uh, from all that food that they're eating. So if you don't see that happening, nine times out of ten, it's, it's because that food is not being digested. That food is not being absorbed. Um, the calories are not being, being taken in. Okay. Um, those are mostly the majority of the behavioral signs that could lead to uh, a diagnosis of eating disorders. This part is about the physical, um, the physical signs of a child that may be dealing with an eating disorder. So first and most importantly, if you feel like your child has a very abnormally high or abnormally low uh, weight, this can definitely be a sign of an eating disorder. So either we are dealing with an increased weight and a sensitivity to that, or a very low weight and more uh, prone to anorexia, okay? Also, if we have a long-term stagnation of weight, so again, like I said in, in the first part, usually, um, you know, usually your child is growing, so there's no reason for, the, for their weight not to increase. This is a normal human process when we are um, kids, uh, uh, children, teenagers, preteens, whatever it is that we are. So your child is going to grow. Your child is going to see a weight change as they get older. Height and weight. Um, so if you feel like your child is very much on, the, on, on, a, on a plateau, if you want, of weight, um, most of the time that is uh, a sign of an eating disorder because they are somehow controlling that weight either not eating too much or eating a lot and then throwing it up so that they don't add any weight. Other, um, other physical signs are hair loss from the head. So if you tend to see a lot of hair on your child's pillow, that could be a sign that they're malnutritioned. It can be a sign that they're not getting enough nutrients, that their body is in a state of survival, basically. Um, you also have if your child is feeling cold, if your child has a lot of stomach pain, if they complain about stomach pain a lot of the time, um, if they're dizzy, tired, if you feel like their energy is just out, um, and if you constantly feel like they don't actually have the energy to, to be lively, you know, to, to go out and play with their friends, let's say, or, or go to the mall or whatever it is that their usual hobbies are. So if you start to see that you know, the, the physical is matching with the behavioral, like let's say they're quiet and reserved lately. And that is attached to the, the fact that they feel tired, they feel exhausted, they don't feel like doing much activity. This is probably because they're not getting enough nutrients. Um, you also have a sensitivity to teeth. You also have mouth infections. Um, um, these, are, these are signs that could lead to possibly, you know, malnutrition. Um, you also have, this is something that maybe some parents would recognize, um, but this would be more far into, into the eating disorder, which is um, hair growth on, play, on areas of your child's body that don't usually grow. So what happens in that, in that scenario is that um, your child, because they are um, having such little nutrition um, and such little food, and their body fat may be low, um, your body starts to produce hair as a form of insulation to make sure that your body is warm. Um, so if you start to realize unusual, unusual um, 
hair growth uh, on, your on your child's body, this could be an indicator as well. As the third part of this video, which is the psychological signs that your child may be dealing with an eating disorder, this one is a bit tricky because um, there's no clear-cut signs sometimes when it comes to psychological signs, like I said, because most of the time the child wants to hide the fact that they are um, trying not to eat or avoiding food altogether and they really, really don't want to show that to especially their parents. Um, but some things we could, you know, start, slightly pick up on are if your child, if you feel like your child has suddenly become very, very obsessed with their appearance. They care so much about the way they look, about what they dress, about how how they look in, in a certain pair of jeans or how they look in a certain pair of, uh, of, of a dress, let's say. So if you feel like your child often comments a lot about the way that they look, there may be some signs that you have to watch out for and pick up on, on maybe possibly your child viewing um, weight or weight gain in a certain uh, category and that could reflect on their actual um, their actual thoughts and feelings about themselves and their own bodies. Um, so there's that. There's also expressing the guilt of eating anything, uh, any food or anything that may be more on the fattier side. So, you know, let's say you're out um, let's say you guys are out to dinner somewhere, maybe you went to the movies, picked up some popcorn, whatever it may be, um, whatever it may be that a social, a social event with you and your family or your, um, your, your, your daughter or your, or your son with their own friends that maybe you, you witnessed or found out about later, whatever the case may be. Let's say you are at the movies and you go to get some popcorn and your daughter or son eats the popcorn, they seem like they are enjoying it, but they also seem kind of hesitant to that. Or they've said, oh, you know what? I want popcorn too. Um, and then maybe when you get the popcorn, the behavior um, towards that. So now that they have the popcorn, they wanted it, they craved it, they told you that. And then when, when you gave them the popcorn, um, they, 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 you felt a hesitation towards eating it um, or, or a sense of guilt from them. Okay, or maybe they enjoyed it so much because they've been depriving themselves for so long and you could see that they enjoyed it, but then maybe commented about the guilt of having that popcorn or, oh, now I'm going to gain two kilos after eating that popcorn um, or that popcorn was very, you know, there was a lot of butter in it or do you think I shouldn't have ate it? Whatever the comments may be, this, th they could comment, they could not comment. Sometimes, you know, it depends on the on the child's character at the end of the day, it depends on how expressive they are. But most of the time you will see you will see some form of guilt appear from eating something that they know will um make them fat, basically. Okay. Um again, like I said, getting getting stressed at meal time. So this is something that you will also see a lot of um low confidence, low self-esteem. So if you feel like your child um, is always not just in food related settings um, is complaining about um, or not even complaining but sometimes they will they will complain about how they see themselves or um, you know just kind of make comments about not feeling as good as they would actually want to feel or just you know putting themselves down in some form in, in some form of way um, not necessarily having to do with weight even Okay, although it does have to do with weight in some form, but you sense that this child has no self-confidence um, or has just doesn't, doesn't see themselves as somebody who can walk proud and confident with themselves and accept themselves. Um, and, and that's the thing, sometimes, sometimes it's not because of the weight, sometimes they are dealing with their own issues of low self-esteem and the weight and uh, the weight and eating patterns have just kind of um, integrated within each other um, so one it could be an either or situation it can be this affected that or that affected this okay also if you sense that your child is depressed maybe uh, anxious maybe um, has anger or, or a lot of mood swings so these uh, these things could could be 
um, psychological, psychologically related um, reasons of why your child is dealing with an eating disorder. And the thing is, um, I will I will put a short video of reasons why um, reasons why your child may actually uh, be dealing with an eating disorder. Okay, so some of the time it's not just that they're scared to get fat or they're scared that they're gonna gain weight. If you feel like any of these signs, whether they be behavioral, psychological, or physical, um, if you recognize these signs or you see these signs in uh, a family member or a sibling, um, definitely, definitely, um, you should go out of your way to schedule an appointment with a dietitian with for them and an eating disorder psychologist. Both together are going to lead your 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 child to um, a road of recovery. If you um, discover these early on, definitely this is something that has to be taken seriously and addressed um, early on before it gets worse. Okay, um, so definitely, definitely, if you feel like your child fits into any of these um, um, signs or symptoms that I spoke about, just go and take them check things out um you know you don't want to you don't want to let it um, let it go on for for too long um and in some way your child is definitely going to you know uh, appreciate that later down the road so um yeah i just wanted to bring awareness to this because i see it a lot and i have a lot of patients who are dealing with this um and their parents are dealing with it as well and their family members so um and it's really a shame it's really it's it's it makes me really sad to see this because you know um everybody's beautiful no matter what their size is um no matter what their size is no matter what they think that they are um you know there's always there's always beauty in everyone in their own way um so and you know it's it's it's, it's also sad because they, they think that, you know, starving themselves or um, just, you know, getting rid of that food in any way or not eating or depriving themselves, that this is going to lead them to the body that they want um, or that this is, you know, this is how it should be. Um, and yeah, it's, it's something that I really, really um, I'm passionate about to help those um, kids or teenagers or there's a lot of adults as well with eating disorders. Um, but you know, this video was about kids, so I guess stick to that. So yeah, um, I, I do want to help those people out. Um, and you know, the, the patients that I do see like that, I always put in that extra care for them because, you know, they're dealing with a lot. So also as a parent, um, or a sibling with another sibling, um, that is dealing with an eating disorder, uh, you want to try to be as supportive as you can. Just try to, you know, um, understand them. Don't judge them about, um, you know, their, their thoughts and feelings about it. Um, and try your best not to pressure them to eat. Although I know that, you know, as a parent, you're, you're scared and you, you do want them to have food. You, you do want them to eat. You do want them to, to grow. And you're scared that if they don't, this is going to cause um, a form of malnutrition with them but pressuring them is probably the worst way you can get them to eat um, so try to be as supportive as possible um, i try not to make your child feel like this is something that um, you know it, it's their fault or you know they're they're not thinking straight or you know try to come at the try to tackle the the situation in a very loving and understanding way anyways i hope that was helpful um, I hope, you know, I, I brought some awareness to a lot of parents that may, um, that may be dealing with a bit of a struggle or change with their child. Subscribe, comment, give me your uh, own uh, stories, questions, whatever it is. Um, and let me know what you think about eating disorders in children. Um, I would love to hear that as well. So stay tuned for more nutrition related facts.